Hi there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete lecture. And in today's series, we are going to take a look at hydroboration of alkenes, which is a method by which organic chemists will turn alkene functionalities into alcohol groups. So we're going to take a look at some of the mechanism behind that and everything else that's involved in the stereochemical and regiochemical outcomes coming up on Chem Complete right now. All right, so hydroboration of alkenes. The general process that we are going to be taking a look at here is when we have an alkene and we are going to subject it to two different sets of reagents. The first set is going to be the borane itself, which we will discuss in more detail in just a minute, which is BH3. And then usually this is in an ether solvent. THF is the most common. That's tetrahydrofuran for those that may not know. And then the second portion, the follow-up that actually gives you the alcohol after this first portion, is that you're going to use hydrogen peroxide. And then you want that to be in some sort of a basic solution or basic medium. So you'll typically just see hydroxide or something like that written. Maybe it might be NaOH at times. Uh, but peroxide in basic solution is what you are looking for to finish this off. And what it will produce is an alcohol, and that alcohol will add to the less substituted position of the alkane. So let's now take a look at some of the details and understand how this mechanism works step by step as well as why we see some of the outcomes that we see because many times we will typically see a group being added to the more substituted carbon and that's because of carbocation so you could probably make a prediction that we're not going to have a carbocation in this mechanism all right so the use of borane which is bh3 and sometimes you may see this written as b2h6 it's the same reagent that we're talking about here Okay, but the use of borane, which is BH3, with an alkene will yield an organoborane intermediate. So this is kind of the first step that we're looking at here. The borane itself is going to be the boron, and then you'll have three hydrogens associated with it. So what's important to remember here, and we're going to discuss this a bit in the statement that's written right below here, is that this is an sp2 hybridized uh, compound, and that Bor uh, the boron has a p orbital that is open and available for electron acceptance and that will make it a Lewis acid it will also make it quite reactive in terms of being able to accept electrons from incoming groups now we would also have an alkene the alkene we're just going to represent as a carbon carbon double bond here obviously you could have lots of different uh, r groups or hydrogens or other functionalities that may be coming off right of these particular areas here uh, but this is just a generalized carbon carbon bond that we're showing here and then the first step what that is going to yield is that we will get a carbon carbon pi bond that breaks apart and we will get the bh2 that adds here and that last hydrogen will add on the same face of the molecule but the opposite carbon okay and then we would have uh because we've broken the pi bond apart some sort of tetrahedral geometry uh, that we would see down here okay so that is the first step that we would have here now again the borane is going to be quite reactive because it has six valence electrons instead of eight and it's a Lewis acid with that p orbital so just as a reminder we're really looking at something where the boron right that represents a p orbital there is looking for electrons to fill that position there and then kind of coming out at 120 degree angles are going to be the hydrogens right and so this is a flat substance and it is also a substance looking for electrons so it's going to cooperate pretty well it's going to be pretty reactive with anything that we've got in solution there that has some electron potential now the borane addition occurs three times yielding a trialkyl borane so what that means is if you come back up here and you look at this step this first step that i wrote out here is going to occur 
two additional times. So this boron that is right here, the BH2, that will go and seek out another alkene, and then it will be down to a BH. It will do it again, and then you will have a trialkyl borane compound where the hydrogens have effectively been removed and replaced with the alkyl groups. Now, once you have this intermediate, the second step is the treatment with the hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide is a very powerful oxidizer. And so what that is going to do is it's going to oxidize those borane bonds and it will provide alcohol functional groups in return when we finish the reaction. And so uh, to show you kind of an example of what this might look like, we're going to need three versions of the alkene that we want here. So let's use cyclohexene. And we'll just put the pi bond right over here. The three is representing the molar equivalents. I'm going to need three of these for every BH3 that I utilize. Okay, so the first step that I'm working with here, step one, is that I'm going to expose it to the borane, right? And again, I've got this in likely an ether solvent that it's going to kind of couple to. And then after that, what I would have, if this goes three times over, is the boron would have, in place of the hydrogens, three of these alkyl groups, okay? So it would have three of the cyclohexyl rings as sort of its substituents at this point. That's a very bad ring. Let's try to redraw that one. Okay, so it doesn't matter what you really have uh, as far as the alkene is concerned you're going to end up with three of these okay as the intermediate here this is the trialkyl uh, borane so this part right here we've just made one of those and these R groups could differ depending on the alkene you have so then the second step is that we would treat it with the hydrogen peroxide in some sort of basic solution and what we would end up with is three of the alcohol groups. Now in this case the alcohol we don't need to see whether it would be on a more substituted position because these are both secondary carbons so we can just show sort of a generic addition here right we've got the alcohol that's added. Now something that we haven't really discussed yet is the fact that when we do this we've touched on it briefly but we need to consider the regiochemistry and the stereochemistry for the outcomes. So regiochemistry refers to the region in which the uh, addition is going to occur. And this is an anti, that's misspelled there, anti-Markovnikov. Gotta love my autocorrect on the Markovnikov addition, meaning it'll end up on the less substituted carbon. Now the stereochemistry is syn addition, which means the same side of the molecule. So don't confuse anti-Markovnikov with anti-addition from a stereochemistry perspective, which is where you're on opposite ends or kind of like a trans sort of behavior in the stereochemistry. Whereas syn is more of a cis type, it's going to be on the same face, the same side of the molecule. All right, now if you take a look at what this is going to mean, well, let's just take a look at something like a butene. So if I have one butene, and then I expose it to the set of reagents. So I'm going to number them now because I'm using the same arrow. So in step one, I would use the borane in THF. And then in step two, I would use the peroxide with basic conditions. And what I'm going to end up with is we know the alcohol will be on this primary, this less substituted position. But because it's syn addition, I want to show, right, that these have added on the same side of the molecule. So the hydrogen that adds from the orig original BH3 and the alcohol that is added in place of the boron bond are going to add to the same face, the same side of the molecule. So this right here represents syn stereochemistry. And the fact that the alcohol is on the primary versus the secondary carbon where the hydrogen is represents the anti-Markovnikov behavior. Okay, now the hydroboration mechanism, if we look at some of how this initially sets out or starts up, this can help explain why we are observing the regiochemistry and the stereochemistry outcome that we do. 
So the first thing that I want you to realize or consider is that the electronegativity, which we'll just abbreviate E dot N here, or I'll typically do that, the boron has an electronegativity ranking of 2.0, and the hydrogen has an electronegativity ranking of 2.1. So why is this so important? Because when I get ready to kind of align my uh, borane molecule, right, which I'm not going to draw perfectly in terms of bond angle here, uh, but that's because I'm going to get it set up for the intermediate for this reaction in a minute. What I'm looking at is that the hydrogens, which are almost always partially positive, is partially negative here relative to the boron metalloid, which is going to be partially positive. And that is a big deal because when we get ready to take a look at the transition state headed towards the intermediate as the bonds are starting to break here, as this pi bond starts to break along the alkene, what's going to happen? Well, as the pi electrons break apart, the secondary position, which has more hyperconjugation, will be able to better host a partial positive charge, right? Meaning that these electrons are really headed towards the primary position. So this secondary position versus the primary position is going to create a partial carbocation, not a full carbocation, because remember, based on the results, we realize there cannot be any full carbocation. Otherwise, we wouldn't observe the 100% syn addition. You would get a hydrogen that could add to the front or to the back of this molecule here. Okay, so that partial positive alkyl position is going to better align with the hydrogen on the borane, on the BH3. And that includes both from an electronic standpoint as well as from a sterics standpoint, okay? So both of those are going to be important when we look at this first intermediate in the mechanism here. So if I come down and I look, I'm going to end up with, here's the butene, right? The pi bond is starting to break here. And then it is starting to form with the boron. So here's the boron here. Okay, the boron's going to ha be starting to break a bond to one of its hydrogens, and that is going to be starting to form a bond with the secondary carbon. So what I have here, and we don't want to forget the other hydrogens, this is really the intermediate that is proposed for this mechanism. Okay, So I want you to take note of a few things here. We're in the transition state, so some of the electronics can shift around after the transition state. But what we're really looking at here is that as this partial positive buildup occurs, as this pi bond is breaking, this partial negative group is better aligned with that partial positive, right? The boron, which is partially positive, does not really electronically line up with that secondary position. We don't want two partial positives starting to approach one another. So that's the electronics argument. But what we can also talk about is the fact that this is secondary and therefore it is more crowded. And this over here is a primary position, which is less crowded. So what does that mean? The boron is larger than the hydrogen, right? We can even say the boron with the two additional hydrogens is larger than a single hydrogen. And so therefore the primary position has reduced sterics. And it is better to have that in alignment with the larger boron portion. So we can really make an argument for reduced sterics over on this end, right? So there are, again, two real factors that we can argue here. One of them is the partial positive secondary and the partial positive boron not aligning together well due to the uh, electronics of that situation. And then the second is a sterics argument. And with this sterics argument, right, we are going to end up with, as this comes together, a four-membered intermediate. Right? And this four-membered intermediate state is what's going to help explain the outcomes that we see. Because you can see the hydrogen and the boron are linked together. They come from the same reagent. So they have to add to the same face of the molecule. In other words, this boron and this hydrogen, they're linked together as they're starting to break that bond apart. And so they have to add in a single step at the same time. That means they have to add to the same side of the molecule. So what does that result in? 
Well, that results in the sin addition that we talked about a minute ago. It means that the hydrogen that adds needs to add to the same side of the molecule as the BH2, right? As these bonds break apart and move to give us our first intermediate here. But this four-membered intermediate state, which is really kind of a uh, transition state as the bonds are breaking and forming, is really explaining what we see here in the outcome, right? And so then we would have the peroxide and the peroxide would finish this off, right? After we do the H2O2 addition with the base, it's going to replace the BH2 but in such a way that it will preserve the stereochemistry. And so we end up with an alcohol, and this is the hydroboration addition, okay? So in total, you've added water. You've added a hydrogen, and you've added an OH group. And it will always be on the same side, so we will always observe 100% syn addition. Now, it could also have added this way. There's no problem with saying both of these face the opposite end, but they cannot be opposite of one another right? So it's this or this. They're both possible, but these are the only two outcomes. So you would never see in uh, one of these cases something like this, where you've got one of these like this, and then the other one like this. This would be an anti-addition, and this cannot happen uh, based on the intermediate, right? Based on the four-membered and the sterics and the electronics that we see there. So hopefully that has helped to introduce the hydroboration reaction. And more specifically, I hope that it gave you some clarity as to why we are observing what we are regarding the anti-Markovnikov uh, addition as well as the syn stereochemistry during that addition. So as always, thank you for learning with me. Like, thumbs up, all that good stuff for the video. If you leave a comment, I'll try to get back to you. Down in the description box below, chemcomplete.com. We've got lots of free resources to help you out. We also have very affordable paid guides if you'd like to support the channel. And you could also drop a super thanks if you'd like to support us that way. So thank you so much for learning, and I will see everybody in the next lecture. Bye-bye.